Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, we'd like to welcome to the Independent Thinking Podcast our uh, honored guest, Mr. Rob Stock. This is the point where the episode goes off the rails. Of course, there's a lot of credible news sources in our industry, and it can create that challenge of where do I go? Where can I grab the best headlines? We need that one single place we can go to learn everything we need to. What we're trying to do with the Independent Thinking Media Center is make it all about the retailer, take the the bits and pieces from across all of those great trade partners that we have and provide the content that is most relevant to our retailers, to our members, and cut out the extra stuff. Welcome into the Independent Thinking Podcast. This is your host, Rob Stott. Prior to primetime, we sat down with Mike Whitaker, our uh, guy that heads up the Nationwide Learning Academy on top of all the other things he does here at Nationwide, uh, to talk about education at the virtual show. And uh, you may have noticed that that episode said part one, and today we are getting ready to dive into part two. Um, during the interview, during the course of the interview with Mike, he, uh, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a challenge to keep him on track, but we did so for 25 minutes, uh, just about 25 minutes, and roughly halfway through, uh, that's when things started to go off the rails, and Mike decided to turn the mics around, if you will, uh, and uh, turn the questioning towards the, the host of the podcast, this guy, uh, myself, and ask us a, a whole bunch of stuff that uh, we ended up, hey, it ended up working out into a, a second episode. He, Mike, you know, went 61 episodes without appearing on the podcast and now has gone two prior to his second appearance. So uh, he, he got two for one and, uh, you know, we had a good time with it. It actually gave us a good opportunity to talk about a lot of the communications initiatives that we have here at Nationwide uh, between you know, a little bit about the podcast, of course, and everything that's going on with the independent thinking websites and um, our our confidence index that we launched uh, almost a year ago now. And uh, just a lot of great stuff to, to dive into that we're doing, um, you know, for the independent retail channel. And, you know, as, as much as I, uh, I make fun and bash him for it, uh, you know, Mike did a great job and uh, maybe has a future as a, a podcast host, not the independent thinking podcast. You'd have to break that out of out of my cold dead hands but uh <laughs> messing with him and uh no he's uh he's he's a great interviewer so um appreciate him doing that and giving us the chance to talk about these initiatives and so i guess let's go ahead and dive into this interview with me uh here on the independent thinking podcast courtesy of mike whitaker Now, Rob, I, I want to talk about you for a second. This is, a, I've only been 61 episodes. This may be the first time it happens. But I, I really sort of want to turn the table for a second because right. so much of what you do for the membership really ties into where my heart's at, and that's education. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, we'd like to welcome yeah. to the Independent Thinking Podcast our uh, honored guest, Mr. Rob Stock. And and this this is the point where the episode goes off the rails, but I, I'll yeah. allow it. Uh, and the fact that I got you this far into the episode without doing this, I, I'll take it. So no. Yeah, and, and I will happy, say for, happy to be here. <laughs> for everybody listening, this is where the podcast got fun. This is where this episode really is going to pick up steam. So Rob, most of our members certainly know you, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. They know you from your time as the face and voice of Dealerscope. A lot of really cool things that you did there. We were very fortunate here at Nationwide to, to bring you into the family. It's been a year, hasn't it? Yeah, a little over a year, a year and a half almost by the uh, the time we're talking at primetime. So crazy, isn't it? <laughs> and I will, I will tell you, we got Rob here with lots of promises about being able to interact with the brightest minds in the industry to get to be face to face with the best retailers in the independent channel. Yep. And then we've left him in that room with that microphone. I know. That's I needed the microphone to feel like I had someone here with me. So this yes, is you're not alone. <laughs> so Rob, here's the thing. Obviously, um, you are the driving force and, uh, and phenomenal host of the Independent Thinking Podcast. And that would also imply that you probably have something to do with the Independent Thinking Magazine. Can you tell us a little bit about the latest with the magazine? Of course, a great new edition coming for Primetime. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the Independent Thinking Magazine, if you've noticed over the last couple of uh, editions of it uh, at Primetime, whether it was virtual Primetime or in person, it got a little bit of a facelift. Uh, that you know that had to do prior to my my joining the team. Miss Amy Kroom, our director of PR and communications, uh, driving the the magazine there and the look and feel of the magazine. And 
Uh, yeah, we got a, a, another edition out. You can head to our website, our new website, by the way, uh, nationwidegroup.org slash independent thinking. And it's uh, a completely refreshed media center where you know, we'll, you'll find all of the same magazine content that you'd expect to find in independent thinking, um, all the thought leadership from the business leaders and uh, business groups across nationwide, uh, from the merchants to business services, digital, marketing, all of our great teams. Mike, I think we even got you in there a couple of times. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all that content. Um, but as well, you'll also find our, our press releases and news articles and blogs and uh, of course, the podcast and uh, all the other great content from not only nationwide, but our vendor partners, trade partners, uh, all being worked into our brand new independent thinking website. So, Rob, I've got to say, as a retailer, you have checked one of those boxes of my wish list. Of course, there's a lot of credible news sources in our industry. There's a couple that may not be. We won't get too deep into that. But the breadth of news that, that applies to retail in durable goods and applies to electronics, furniture, bedding, outdoor is very, very wide. And it can create that challenge of where do I go? Where can I grab the best headlines? So everybody, and I've talked to a lot of retailers who've said this as well, we need that one single place we can go to learn everything we need to. Can you tell us a little bit about how that new media hub can, can serve as that one single spot? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, um, you know, having that trade background, uh, you can kind of get a sense when when you're part of trade media, it, it's tough to kind of toe the line of being, you know, writing for a consumer as opposed to writing for the retailer. Um, so that that that's what you'll find it a lot, no matter how reputable the, the publication, there's a lot of um, fluff, if you will, uh, for a, a publication or, or uh, you know, some of those brands that are out there, because th there's a lot to write about in those industries. So, what we try to do or what we're trying to do with the independent thinking media center is, you know, make it all about the retailer um, kind of take the, the bits and pieces from across all of those, uh, you know, great trade partners that we have and um, provide the content that is most relevant to our retailers, to our members and um, cut out the extra stuff, you know, get, get to the heart of what's important to them from whether it's on the product side, hearing directly from our manufacturer partners, our vendor partners, uh, or each other, uh, you know, kind of that's, that's really where the, the podcast was born out of was getting those conversations with members and um, directly from our, you know, from our nationwide team and, and vendor partners as well. Um, you know, you can learn a lot about the business and learn a lot about how others are operating in the business. And uh, that's just sort of what we've taken to heart with independent thinking and really blown it up from just the magazine to uh, now what you see online. And I, I love it. The way it's, it's carried that title for a long time, but that truly is the focus, right? It really is what's relevant and what matters yep. to the independent. Right. Absolutely. And I, I mean, we, we even, I think back to my first couple of weeks here when, you know, I, my first goal when I got here was, all right, I, I had been doing a podcast for Dealerscope. I, you know, I, I think people had seen me walking around prime times with uh, my microphones and uh, my little voice recorder and uh, trying to record some episodes while I was covering the industry, uh, you know, at prime time. But uh, you know, I wanted, when I got here, I was like this, this, we're continuing this, we're doing this. I finally get my chance to talk to members and uh, here we go. So, you know, I um, wanted to find a name for that podcast and we, we did a little call for it and, you know, I still haven't been able to get them on, but I, I want to give a little shout out to Mr. Jordan Ruda, uh, who was very funny in his suggestion. He was like, it would call it, you know, Rose's uh, Recollections or, or wisdom from Whitaker. And he was like, you idiots, just call it independent thinking. You've got the brand, just lean into it. And Hey, that's what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we've had a, a lot of success, I think with it, it's a, a name that everyone recognizes, you know, members or otherwise in the space. So why not just stick with it? So I'll give you a little piece of trivia that uh, you may or may not have known. Uh oh, uh, There is there, there, you brought him up. So I have to talk about, it. I'll go ahead and throw this one out of here. Here's, here's uh, useless knowledge for the Independent Thinking Podcast. Did you know Jordan Rorda and I actually have matching tattoos? Oh, get out. Are they in the same spot? I, I, I can't go too deep <laughs> into that conversation. I'm just going to say we have a matching tattoo. It's a, it's a special bond. Jordan is uh, absolutely awesome. one of my favorite human beings on the planet. We'll get him on here so eventually on. because I, I promised him an episode for naming. That was the whole you know, the deal for naming the podcast, even though it's a name we had. He was the one that drove the, uh, the name. So we'll get him on here. He, he led us over to the water and said, here it is. You put the water in the trough. Now have a drink. And it worked out great. It now, <laughs> one of those other things, Rob, you you are a man of many talents and many responsibilities here at Nationwide. We do take pride in being a hardworking. So not only are you 
uh, a, a key part of our independent thinking media hub. Not only are the host of the independent thinking podcast, one of your responsibilities uh, involves social media, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We kind of alluded yeah. to it early on uh, you know, a little bit ago here, but um, I, having the NLA and being able to talk about it, uh, social media is, it, it's not a back burner job, trust me, but it, it, it's, it's a big part of what we do. And um, if I'm being honest, most of my time is probably spent, you know, messing around with our, our social media here at Nationwide. Well, and here's a, here's some accolades I'll throw your way. I know that our engagement, our audience there on social media has grown immensely over the past year, year and a half, uh, a very engaged audience. Now, if, if I'm a me, if I'm a member and I'm not like Mike, I have social media channels. I've got a Facebook, I've got a Twitter. Maybe I have an Instagram and a Snapchat, um, maybe even a TikTok. Uh, if I connect with Nationwide on those platforms, and you heard it here first, folks, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean that Rob isn't going to start a Nationwide marketing group, TikTok, just saying, it's a neat <laughs> idea. You might see some <laughs> PJ... PJ dancing or Tom doing like TikTok dances. We'll see. We'll see if we can get them. We'll start that on St. Patty's Day. (laughs) St. Patty's Day social hour will debut the TikTok. But if I'm a member and I engage with Nationwide on social media, what can I expect to see there? A lot of content. Uh, we there's a lot going on. Um, obviously around prime time, I think we're probably a little more active than than usual. Um, sharing updates on the show during during the show, you know, you'll see live tweeting of sessions and uh, reminders about upcoming sessions, things like that. But um, outside, and of course, we're going to have our, our most engagement around these prime times. So we're trying to, you know, spread that throughout the year. Um, you'll you'll see at least a post a day across all of our channels, and it's all of our. I mean, it's the content we're we're creating here uh, at Nationwide. It's our podcasts and our, our press releases, our blogs that we're sharing out, uh, but also the the news that um, you'll see from our trade partners when vendors are mentioned, when our members are covered. You know, we're making sure to to highlight all of those things so that you know we're amplifying not just the voice of Nationwide, but the voice of our members, the voice of our vendor partners, so uh, that everyone knows all of the awesome things that um, our members and vendors are doing. Content is truly valuable to the independent yeah. dealer. And I love the fact that you mentioned highlighting news. So I'm going to get in trouble for this, okay? Uh-oh. <laughs> and Rob is intimately aware, I do tend to get in trouble occasionally <laughs> um, with our Director of Communications and PR, Miss Amy Crew. Amy, I just want to say for the record, love you. But Rob, I know there's a big project coming up that you're playing a key role in as Nationwide is celebrating. We won't say what it is, but we're celebrating a milestone this year, Something. a milestone that's not possible without members, a milestone built on members. Can we expect to see a lot of members being highlighted as we move into the second half of 2021? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I'll just say that we've got members, I think, across what's the number of states in the United States? 50? Uh, hold on, right, let me, right? let me, let me, hold on. Google, uh, pull up a map real quick. Google says it, it says it stands at 50, and that may have okay. some implications that there's 50 states. That might have something to do with it then. Uh, but you'll see something where we highlight maybe one member for, for we're just going to pick an arbitrary number one from every state for no particular reason, from one from all 50 states, so that we have 50 members covered, uh, talking just about those 50 members for whatever it, 50 reasons you want to think of. And if you're, if you're listening to this podcast and it hit you just now, you said, I want to be that one member in my state. Um, I'll go ahead and throw this out there. Rob.stot at nationwidegroup.org. Drop him a note and say, hey, Rob, I'm your guy. I'm your gal for the state of this. And I mean, you get there first, you win. Yeah, we're, we're going to have some fun with it. I, I love that. I think that's one of my favorite parts of this job is that I, you know, kind of like you, you get to talk to so many members and interact with them and learn about, you know, what they're doing about their stores and about their businesses, but about them and, and just getting to know them. And um, so that's a, a project that, uh, you know, for whatever reason we're doing it, we're, we're certainly going to have a lot of fun doing it. And I, I can't wait to, you know, uncover all of those stories and, and learn about them and just continue to do what I've been doing. And one thing that I'll tell you as we go through this process, and Rob, I'd love for you to speak to this for just a moment. Those stories that we learn about independent retailers, they're so endearing, they're inspiring, and they're oftentimes the American dream. How important is it for a retailer today to make sure that they're telling that story in their market? Oh, uh, content, you kind of said it, I think, already, but content is king, um, you know, in this, just in life, I feel like. That, that sounds so big and fluffy, and I don't mean it to, but it really is. <laughs> and it's not just because I produce content every day, but, uh, you know, content is what... It, 
everyone needs to be producing some sort of content. Um, you, you need to be, you know, if you're not out there talking about yourself, um, it's possible that no one is. So you have to be at the forefront of telling your story, um, doing what you can to get your name out there, your brand out there. Uh, you know, work relationships, work with your vendor partners to to help them amp- get them to help amplify you as a brand. And um, you know, there's so many ways and strategies, and there's NLAs on it, and a, a lot of content that you can find on our site on it. Um, but you, you know, you really cannot understate the value of talking about yourself. And you know, that's sort of again, it kind of drives back to the heart of what we do and why you know we do what we do with the podcast with independent thinking. And that's just to amplify our members' voices and uh, make sure that uh, it, at least we're talking about them. And it's a, it's a skill. There really is a skill. Now, you've heard it said uh, around nationwide. I've said this once. I've said it at least a thousand times. Best story always wins. Yep. But only stories that are told get to compete. Now, I'll say this, and Rob, you're, you're going to have a busy week with the inbox. But it's another place where if, if you haven't ever told your story in your market, and you're trying to find a creative way to do that. It's how your company started and how you grew and what makes you different. I promise you those stories are things that we love to feature on the podcast yeah. uh, that we love to talk about. If you need some help doing that, Rob's one of those guys who is wonderful at moderating and facilitating the telling of your story. So you can raise your hand, drop him an email and say, hey, Rob, I'd really like to come on a future episode of the podcast and, uh, and tell that story. And once you're done telling the story, not only does it exist, but you're able to have that voice a little bit larger because you're able to tell folks in your market, hey, we were recently featured on this national podcast. Uh, this podcast is syndicated in all 50 states and internationally. <laughs> and beyond. And beyond. <laughs> and beyond. They actually can pick up this podcast from the International Space Station. <laughs> so you never know who's listening right now. I know, Rob, at some point in, in, in all the highlights of the Independent Thinking Podcast, You've actually even had an astronaut on the show, right? Mr. Massimino, uh, back in Houston, the last time we were all able to come together. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how many people could say they, I know Dos Marcos can, they, they got him as well. And also a friend of his uh, on the podcast, but not too many podcasts with astronauts out there. And uh, not we, we too certainly many. got and one. I take comfort in knowing that that must've been what Rob was referring to when he said, compared to my normal guest, you're a disappointment. <laughs> so no car was really hot <laughs> now Rob, i'm going to swerve a totally different direction okay Uh-oh. <laughs> um, Here we go. another project that you literally uh put your hands around took ownership of and you've been driving for quite some time is our retail confidence index yep and it's different than any other piece of data that's available in the market we talk a lot about consumer confidence but you've been really focused on retailer confidence can you tell us a little bit about What's going on there? Yeah. Um, so I, it, this is another passion project that uh, d- if you know me, you you know that I'm kind of a data nerd. But for those that don't, I really like numbers. Uh, for as much as I operate in the world of words and, and talking and writing, um, my SAT scores will actually show that I was a better math score than an English score. So really? There's <laughs> more trivia on today. Right. right. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, I actually scored better in math than I did, but I had no interest in diving into Pythagorean theorems and all that sort of stuff. So, um, I, but I get to do it in, in a way that, uh, is still fun for me and, and gets to incorporate itself into what I do with the, uh, NMG index, as we call it, the nationwide marketing group, independent retail confidence index if you say it all out, a uh, long name, but you know, we data is such a, a big driving force for what nationwide does. And that data is hard sell through uh, data and sell in, sell through data. Um, the way I like to describe the NMG index, our confidence index is that it's more on the, on the side of feels data. Uh, so it's, it's not really, you know, hard sales data, but it's, it's all about our, our retailers that we survey telling us how they feel, how confident they are. Um, you know, in sort of the upcoming month, it's a monthly index that, that we report out on. And, uh, it's, it's got a little bit of an, an algorithm built into it that based on responses, we feed it into this, de- this algorithm and it spits out a number. Uh, and from that number, we're able to tell all sorts of different things. So we ask across categories from like their confidence in foot traffic, their confidence in driving online conversions, product confidence, you know, the ability to sell across I think 18 or 19 categories of products. So uh, it gets really granular. You know, it spits out one number, but you can get really granular with the data um, across the different 
you know, categories of store, whether you're strictly an appliance retailer, maybe you sell appliance and bedding. Uh, the, the numbers slice up a million different ways, but uh, you know, we're, we're just eight months into it. I think March was our eighth month of uh, doing the report and uh, it's been a lot of fun and it's really just getting started because the, the real power in this is going to be when we can start looking back at year over year data and, and trends of how, you know, retailers pr uh, scored their confidence level um, from, you know, March, 2020 to March. Well, we don't have March, 2020 because we started in August, but you know, March, 2021 right. to March, 2022, how it changes and things like that over time. So I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, you know, like I said, a data nerd and uh, this is right up my alley and, uh, I look forward to kind of seeing how it evolves over time. And now, obviously, as with any project like that, the more participation that's there, the more valuable to yep. the retailers that are, are taking a look at that, that that data is. So how hard is it and how time consuming is it to participate? It is a three minute, three to five minute survey. Uh, it's I think the total number is 13 questions of, of the survey, but half of those are you know, how, uh, what kind of retailer are you? What products do you sell and how big are you and where are you located? Um, are, you know, a good chunk of the questions. And then it's just on a scale of one to 10. It's a lot of those kinds of questions and, um, very, you know, you can provide some open-ended feedback, but a three to five minute survey, you know, we send it out through MemberNet. We, we have a list of, uh, retailers who signed up specifically to receive it as well. Um, but we're always looking to grow that and add to, to that list so that, you know, you know, if you, you get, I know member net emails can get a little long and um, you, you get a lot of alerts mixed in there. So to make sure that you get it emailed directly to you every month, you can sign up for it, uh, you know, on member net. We, we've got a form to fill out where, where you can go ahead and uh, make sure that you get our survey every month or reach and out you can to even Absolutely. You can, yeah. you can designate just a couple minutes a month to participate there, have your voice heard. And uh, that, that study, that index that comes out monthly uh, that's not just great for retailers. That's great for uh, manufacturer partners that are looking at that. There's a lot of weight that goes into how you feel. There's one thing about what the numbers say. There's something else for how we feel. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it, with all that, you are obviously the host of the Independent Thinking Podcast. First of all, congratulations on 61 episodes. Yeah, we'll see if we make it past it. <laughs> so with, with oh, no, we're already... <laughs> We're already targeting for the 100th, the 150th. We'll celebrate those milestones. We'll, we'll have some fun. We but <laughs> one thing I would ask you, Rob, I know that as a podcast host, you have a, a wide amount of exposure to the wonderful world of podcasting that is growing like wildfire. Every day, every day. The way, you know, you think back to like when the app store launched on iPhone and it was like a couple hundred apps, now it's millions. I feel like that's where we are with podcasts where, you know, several thousand launch every day. So it's just unbelievable the amount of... Yeah. Uh, Audio a lot of those launch, there. a lot of those don't make it 61 <laughs> episodes. I will say that now, our good friends, Mark Kinsley, Mark Quinn's, they, they have uh, literally laid claim to being the galaxy's number one mattress podcast. I, I believe that it's time. Maybe this became the galaxy's number one independent retailing podcast. <laughs> Just throwing that out. But uh, as members look for ways to creatively consume this content, because a lot of times in retail, speaking from experience, Finding 45 minutes to sit down and really focus, let alone watch us on YouTube. Now, Rob looks great on this. I have a face for radio. It, it works <laughs> out. There's so many ways you can get it. Now, before we dive into how to uh, consume it, what are all the places that I can go to subscribe Ooh, to the podcast? There are lots. Um, you can listen to it You know, right on our, our Nationwide Marketing Group website, uh, independentthinking. Uh, the Nationwide Marketing Group website under the Independent Thinking Podcast uh, section. You can stream them all right there. But you know, if you're watching the video version of this, you know that we have the playlist on YouTube. Uh, there's also Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, any major podcasting platform not named there uh, is typically streaming these as well. Absolutely. So, Rob, um, what are we seeing trending today with podcast listeners? What are all the ways that they're finding time to consume a podcast, to learn all the things that come from hearing an episode? Uh, what are some creative ways that they're working that into their daily lives? So, I mean, there's a bunch of ways, uh, maybe not during the pandemic as much if you, you weren't commuting, but Hey, um, you know, if you're, you're sitting at home, I, I don't want to think about the possibility of someone listening to me while they shower, but you, you see those shower speakers <laughs> nowadays, that that's an option. You throw that little suction cup on the wall and listen to Rob while you're lathering up. Um, 
or, you know, I, I mean, the commute is typically where you will find someone listening to a podcast. Uh, you know, that, that's always a, a popular option. Um, I, I know we had mentioned menial house tasks. If you're cleaning the house, throw a podcast on in the background. Uh, if you're doing yard work outside, you know, throw some headphones on and uh, it helps the time go by. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that that's that's actually where I get my weekly dose of the independent thinking podcast is is sitting on the zero turn, rolling (laughs) it around and and, and learning about what's going on. So lots of ways. Now, here's one of those things, too, though. I've got one of those yards that only takes about a half an hour to cut. Yep. And the podcast typically lasts about 45 minutes. Is there any way I can get 45 minutes of podcast in a 30 minute lawn mowing experience? Sounds impossible. Like, well, it's 45 minutes. How are you going to find 30? That is doable. Uh, there's actually a setting when you're listening to these podcasts, if you're on Apple, uh, where if you're able to keep up with someone who talks fast, just hit that little play at 1.5 speed time and uh, you will be able to finish a 45 minute episode in 23 minutes. <laughs> now, I did learn that at the 3x rate. Oh, that's insane. We are risking insane. copyright infringement because we sound a lot like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Those aren't good. But one point five. But is it's about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's um. It, it it really has been a ton of fun getting on here to chat with you. So Rob, here's here's my question for you. So many things happening in PR and communications, and you guys carried a lot of the load. We went through 2020 together. Um, I know there were a lot of weekends as you got tasked with things like we need a COVID response hub. We need a back to business hub. We need all this thing. And, and one of the things that I want to say, thank you uh, on behalf of our members, so many great comments came in about the fact that those resources were flowing in real time. And I know you put in a lot of extra time, extra effort, overtime weekends. Um, so I want to say thank you for that. It was a, a phenomenal effort that you and the team made. Appreciate it. Uh, it's it's in the name of retail. I know I don't know if you've talked about this yet on the podcast, but uh, if you guys think that it's just great to see Rob's charming face every week, you welcomed a new member of the family recently, right? We did, we did uh, our second son back in September during this po- this uh, pandemic. So now I know the last time we talked about that before he was born, the jury was out. Did you actually end up going ahead and naming him Mike? No, no, I, we did not do that. Uh, it was under consideration potentially for a middle name, but you know. Scratched I out. Try. I apologize. So maybe the next one. Maybe the maybe. next one. Maybe, maybe the next edition. <laughs> I think you're going to have to make that donation a little higher. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll we'll up the incentive. So as as this podcast is dropping, primetime's happening. Uh, there's so much stuff going on at the show. If somebody came to primetime, they wanted to find you. Uh, we have that brand new feature at, at this show where you can find any attendee. You can kind of at somebody and start a great conversation. I know you're excited about that. Uh, how excited are you about virtual primetime in general? I, I'm pumped. Uh, you know, this this platform that we are uh, on with, you know, the new with this virtual primetime is it's got a lot more engagement opportunities that I think are awesome. Uh, ways to connect with both, you know, the other members that are there with you, the vendors that are there as you're in their booths. And uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. I, the, the fact that we had one under our belt, we kind of learned. Yeah, I thought it was a, a awesome success. And the numbers showed that back in October. Um, But being able to learn like Nationwide does so well and improve on, uh, you know, what we do over time, just it it speaks volumes to to what we do as a group, to what we do on behalf of the members. And, um, you know, we'll we'll we'll, I think, you know, see that come to fruition this week and uh, with prime times moving forward. So there's a lot to look forward to and a lot that I'm excited about. And education, of course. um... There's over 100 sessions at this show, and I should point this out, too. You mentioned the fact those are available on demand. As soon as the session wraps live, you can get it on demand. And I believe, if I understood Mel right, she is the czar of all things primetime. Uh, did I understand her correct that that show platform will remain open for 30 days so members can yep. go back and still poke around the show, still take education 30 full days after the show ends, right? Absolutely. So if you don't catch it during these three days, you will be able to, uh, you know, over the next month, almost a month, um, mm-hmm. you know, be able to go in and, and capture that content and make sure that you get everything out of prime time that you had hoped to. Yes. Suck the marrow out of prime time, just like you do life in every way. <laughs> so Rob, I want to say thank you so much for the chance to come on the podcast. Um, I'd also like to thank you for being a guest on your own <laughs> podcast. That was quite an experience. And uh, I, I can't wait to see all the great things that keep happening uh, here on the Independent Thinking Podcast. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, Rob is not a guy who will plug this very often, but I do encourage you, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. There's always something great ahead. 
And uh, as we teased a little bit, you're likely to hear from a lot of your fellow members. A lot of those great stories in independent retail today will be featured. It's going to be an exciting back half of the year. Uh, and again, there's 50 states. <laughs> Something with 50 is coming. We'll see. We'll see what it is. But I, whatever it is, I can't wait to toast it in Nashville. And, uh, you know, it should be oh. a, a fun time <laughs> to it say the will, least. And, and all of our members back together um, as we get there. I know you're as excited as I am. It's, it's time to get out of the house. It's time to get back to some great conversations around uh, those hallways at primetime on the exhibit floor. And as Steve Bryant likes to put it, and to get those pieces of late night philosophy somewhere near the bar. <laughs> We've all missed that so much and uh, looking so much forward to it. It's going to be awesome. Well, Mr. Whitaker, I thank you for taking the time and, and for taking my time. And uh, no, we, this was awesome and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Won't be long. I promise. Awesome. And thanks again to Mike for, you know, doing that, for taking his time to not only, you know, as in part one, telling us about what he was doing with Nationwide Learning Academy, but then to turn around and give us the chance to talk about some of our communication initiatives here at Nationwide Marketing Group. So uh, always fun to chat about those, uh, the things we're doing with the podcast, with the website, with our blog and uh, everything else at uh, Nationwide Marketing Group on behalf of our members. Um, so appreciate him. Uh, appreciate myself for answering those questions, of course. Uh, no, but and as always, appreciate you listening to the Independent Thinking Podcast, and we will catch you next time.